The iPhone 18 Pro could have a striking new look, better cameras, and faster performance than the iPhone 17 Pro. iPhone 18 and iPhone 18 Pro. The A20 Pro processor is expected to power the next models. There are rumors that it will be made using a cutting-edge 2 nanometer technology. The iPhone 17 series only went on sale for the first time less than a week ago, but the rumor mills have started to spread new rumors about the iPhone 18 series gadgets. They look quite real, but you should always take them with a grain of salt. There are four models in the iPhone 17 series. The iPhone 17, the iPhone 17 Air, the iPhone 17 Pro, and the iPhone 17 Pro Max. But there could be more models added to this lineup in the iPhone 18 series. The iPhone 17 base model, on the other hand, made big improvements. The iPhone Pro models did not introduce any modifications or enhancements compared to the prior Pro versions. So if you're one of those people who don't want to buy the iPhone Pro models solely for the cosmic orange color, then waiting for the iPhone 18 Pro devices undoubtedly makes sense since they will be upgrade-worthy handsets. Therefore, in this post, we have discussed the specifications of the iPhone Pro devices. These specifications have been written based on trustworthy industry speculations and leaks. Under the hood, the performance benefits are likely to be substantial too. The forthcoming versions are predicted to be powered by the A20 Pro processor, which is rumored to be created using cutting-edge 2 nanometer technology. This next-generation processor is projected to give a significant gain in performance and power efficiency, thereby allowing for more advanced on-device and eye functions and a smoother user experience. The A20 Pro chip is also likely to bring in a more efficient C2 modem, which is supposed to increase network connectivity and battery stamina. While Apple granted the iPhone 17 range a big camera improvement, the iPhone 18 series is also slated to receive a major upgrade to its cameras next year. Borrowing the idea from Samsung, Apple is reportedly expected to apply the concept of variable aperture to the 48 megapixels main camera sensor. A variable aperture on the iPhone would provide photographers and videographers superior manual control over how much light to let in. Face ID has been around since 2017, buried in the iPhone's forehead in the form of a display notch and later, a dynamic island, the latter being a pill-shaped cutout. With the iPhone 18 series, Apple is now expected to minimize the dynamic island size by moving the Face ID sensors underneath the display layer. With simply the camera visible on the display as a cutout, the iPhone's forehead might liberate more room for the UI elements and give a less obtrusive viewing experience, just like most Android devices. The iPhone 18 series is also expected to be launched in a different fashion from the iPhone 17 series. Leaks say that Apple would reserve the iPhone 18 Pro, iPhone 18 Pro Max, and iPhone Air 2 for the September 2026 launch event, therefore portraying these devices as Apple's best smartphone offerings. By March 2027, Apple is likely to unveil the iPhone 18 and iPhone 18e as two more cheat versions, all in a drive to boost sales around the start of a new financial year. Based on early evaluations, Apple seems to be off to a strong start with the iPhone 17, 17 Pro, and iPhone Air. I think the great majority of users should forego the Air, but if size and weight take priority for you over camera tech and battery life, you might be satisfied. Opinions could shift in a few months, however, I doubt it. That might even be a perfect moment to buy, providing you can find a refurbished model or a third-party bargain. But I'm skipping this generation. Partly it's because of a low budget, but even if I were wealthy with cash, I might opt to wait regardless. The iPhone 18 series appears like it might have better value for me, regardless of which model I convert to from my iPhone 16 Pro. Here are a few reasons why I'm going to wait. There are some camera advancements in the current generation. The iPhone 17 features a 48 megapixel ultra wide, and the 17 Pro has a 48 megapixel telephoto in both cases, bumps from 12 megapixel sensors. 
All three of the new phones have an 18 megapixel center stage front camera, able to adapt automatically for group pictures. I'm anticipating Apple to increase the 17 Pro's telephoto quality at higher ranges and add some form of telephoto to the base 17, even if it's the old 12 megapixel unit. When you study the problem, though, there's opportunity for improvement. The 17 Pro's optical zoom is only excellent up to 4x, past which you're entering digital zoom, hey, cropping. The standard 17 lags behind rivals like the Pixel 10 in that it lacks any telephoto capability. While the iPhone Air has a single wide-angle camera, it can't even shoot macro images. There's a Jukin rumor that Apple is switching to a three-layer stacked image sensor from Samsung for at least one of its cameras, a move that might potentially reduce noise and boost dynamic range. But the firm definitely won't stop there. I'm expecting it to increase the 17 Pro's telephoto quality at higher ranges and add some form of telephoto to the regular 17, even if it's the old 12 megapixel unit. Meanwhile, I doubt Apple will be able to get away with a single camera system on the Air 2. It needs to give some type of meaningful boost beyond a quicker processor. It's fairly telling that if you utilize the performance comparison drop-down on the official iPhone 17 Pro webpage, you can't measure the device against anything in the iPhone 16 series. It's not hard to see why even Vezza 15 Pro, the 17 Pro, has just 20% faster CPU performance and a 50% improvement in graphics. I could see some tiny advantages over my 16 Pro, but it's hard to imagine them being relevant outside of playing 3D games. That's something I prefer to do on my laptop or Steam Deck anyway. There's been diminishing returns in iPhone performance for a time now. While switching from an iPhone 6 to an XR made a substantial impact for me, the leap to an iPhone 13 was far less dramatic, and I rarely notice any improvement on my current device outside a few select apps. You only need so much horsepower to operate most iPhone apps. Typically, you'll get more by upgrading to 5G than a new Apple processor. I'm not even confident if the 18 Pro's A20 Pro chip will advance that much, but that may be the minimum I need to feel like I'm getting my money's worth. There haven't been any speculations to this effect, but I'd be amazed if there isn't at least one iPhone 18 with silicon carbon technology. If you're new, silicon carbon is a development of the lithium-ion batteries we're used to, merely delivering better energy density. But that alone can have a big effect and allow phone companies to downsize their phones and retain the same capacity. Or maybe even maintain the same sizes while extending runtime. A number of smartphones are already adopting silicon carbon batteries, such as the OnePlus 13, which can outlive an iPhone 16 Pro Max despite being lighter and cheaper. For a brief time, it was even suggested that Apple may take advantage of this for the iPhone Air. It didn't, and the results were anticipated. While the phone may go through a normal day, you receive substantially worse battery life than the iPhone 17. If nothing else, Apple needs to overcome its conservatism to make the Air 2 a more useful device. Apple is continuously ratcheting up the durability of its goods, and to some of us, that matters a great deal. It's one of the reasons I moved from an Apple Watch Series 6 to an Ultra 2 last year. My main activity is weightlifting, and I needed the reassurance that my watch wouldn't crack or scratch prematurely because I knocked it against a machine or barbell. It's also nice to know that if a wearable can survive scuba diving, perspiration and showers should be minor. The most obvious update would be harder ceramic shield glass on the front, and in the case of the iPhone 18, the extension of ceramic shield to the rear. The most obvious update would be harder ceramic shield glass on the front, and in the case of the iPhone 18, the extension of ceramic shield to the rear. Less likely but not impossible is a waterproofing increase from IP68 to IP69, while the iPhone 17 series can be immersed to a depth of 6 meters, which is approximately 20 feet, for 30 minutes. IP69 devices are rated against severe pressures and temperatures. You can, in theory, hose one down if you drop it in the mud. There aren't many IP69 phones today, but the list is expanding. That seems feasible, but I'm less certain that Apple will convert to silicon carbon battery for the iPhone 18 and 18 Pro.
The 17 and 17 Pro already last long enough next to most competitors, and if there's one thing Apple's averse to, it's increasing the cost of parts when users will be fine with something cheaper. It's why base iPhones were stuck with 60Hz displays long after many Android phones had moved to 90 or 120Hz. As for dent and scratch protection, that's a wild card. Apple may find a way of stiffening its aluminium and titanium shelves, which I'd certainly enjoy, because my second pastime is riding electric unicycles. Nothing's going to save my phone in a high-speed wreck, but I'd like to know that everything will be fine at biking speeds. So, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting tech news and updates. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.